Hi everyone, my name is Julie and you're watching my channel, Julie on Books. Today I'm going to read to you from a book called All About Goals and How to Achieve Them by Jack Ensign Addington. I'll be reading from uh, starting on page 42 with the subchapter called Let Us See How the Mind Works. Each one of us, at his point of awareness, individualizes and uses the one mind. We are not separate from it. The one mind, which we all use, has been likened to a vast underground spring, which wells up to the surface wherever there is an opening. As we think, we use the one mind at our own point of expression. The brain is the instrument of mind. Of itself, it does not think. Just as your television set does not originate its programs, mind thinks through the brain, which acts as a receiving set. The conscious and subconscious functions of mind have been compared by psychologists to an iceberg. A vast portion of the iceberg is hidden under the water. Only one ninth appears above the surface. That part which is visible compares to the conscious mind, that little portion of which we are aware. But the great activity is hidden beneath the surface. It is sometimes called the unconscious mind. The conscious mind directs, chooses, analyzes, envisions, imagines, and reasons, both inductively and deductively. The subconscious mind is subject to the conscious mind. It can reason only deductively, taking the premises given it by the conscious mind. It makes no difference what kind of premises they are. The subconscious mind can be compared to a factory. The factory does not question whether or not it receives good designs from the design department, but goes to work on the design it has been given. In the same way, your subconscious mind does not concern itself over the kind of goals you give it. It goes to work on the negative as well as the affirmative goals, carrying out your orders with precision. Because you are a part of the universal mind, at your point of use, you have the resources of the infinite at your disposal. No one said it better than Ralph Waldo Emerson in his essay on history. There is one mind common to all individual men. Every man is an inlet to the same and to all of the same. He that is once admitted to the right of reason is made a free man of the whole estate. What Plato has thought, he may think. What a saint has felt, he may feel. What at any time has befallen any man, he can understand who hath access to this universal mind is a party to all that is or can be done. Each one of us approaches the universal mind at his own point of consciousness. Each one is an inlet to all of it. Only man or woman is able to direct the activity of the subconscious mind knowingly and with the realization of what he is doing. No other part of life has this ability. Only man is aware that as he thinks a thought consciously and lets it rest in his subconscious mind, this thought will emerge in manifestation as the outer expression of that thought. This is the creative process from the invisible world of mind into the visible outer expression. The law of life draws everything together to perfect your dream. I do not know how the subconscious mind does this. I only know it happens. It is a part of the mystery of creation. That was from the book, All About Goals and How to Achieve Them by Jack Ensign Addington. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you guys next time. Bye.